All right, hello everybody. So we are back for hole number four of the uh, tournament here. And I'm going to set up, I'm going to probably keep a kingmaker on. Side spin is going to be very useful for this hole. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and use for this hole. Make sure that a nice side spin ball is on. You can use, you know, a, a katana, a movie ball, a kingmaker. Those are going to be your three good options. Your, you know, maybe even Santa. I don't, I don't think power is going to be, you know, a huge uh, factor for you guys. So, nothing that you really need for a par 3. Um, I do not expect you to need driver on this one. This isn't the long one of the two, apparently. I was surprised when we had to hit driver on that other hole for the other tiebreaker. If you guys saw that hole. But here we are going to get this hole underway. So, just sniper and kingmaker is the two most important things for this hole. Um, what I have played this hole uh, at least three or f three times. I've played this hole three times. So what I've noticed is this fairway is very inconsistent. It got to a point where I started to intentionally try to land it to the left just to try to get some kind of normalcy. Um, ooh, crap, I was going to bring a guardian. I was going to do this. So this is the shot that I recommend um, but I do recommend landing it on the green, especially into the wind. I didn't know what the wind was going to be. Ooh, ooh, wow. So you're not going to be able to do that shot. That's a little unfortunate. So the only way you can do guardian here is by going into power, which is going to really make things interesting. I'm trying to think of a way to get around that, and there really isn't one. But that is the shot that I did want to see, because I do think that is going to be your best holdout. Land it on the green. First bounce, second bounce, land it behind the pin with Guardian and backspin it. I totally forgot that I wanted to do that this morning. Um, I was going to set up to intentionally do that. But now we're just going to kind of go at this a little bit differently. Um, now what I'm going to encourage is you guys try to try to find, you know, the flattest spot. And, and that's kind of here. You can see I have some, some variance in where it's landing. But this is where I'm going to suggest that you guys play it to. And here you can see, you know, I don't really need backspin to land it here. Um, but you can see you can't really side spin it enough to get it over there. I'm not too worried about that. I'm going to play my max wind adjustment. And I'm just going to, you know, do a curl shot. Because I think this is going to get you guys the most consistent rolling up here towards the pin. And there you can see me, uh, you know, I didn't check it up enough, so I came in a little bit too hot. Uh, that was my first time playing it that way. So I got to get my bearings a little bit for that shot. Um, I would kind of suggest to just throw on one backspin. You probably won't need much. Um, I am a little surprised that, especially, you know, up the hill, that it just kind of took off like that. But I think to keep things you know, consistent run across the board, you're going to want to try to land it in the low void there just to keep it going towards the hole. And uh, as you can see here, you know, this is going to be a, a very small bump here um, to where I could almost, you know, still shank it. And uh, you're going to see me, I, I, I timed it a little early there. I wanted to just show you that, uh, you know, if you aim left and perfect, it'll go in, aim left, and great ball, it still goes in. So I just wanted to kind of just show you a little bit of error tolerance that you can leave yourself and still give yourself the possibility to make that one. So I kind of jumped the gun a little bit intentionally there, but, uh, you know, if I was a little bit slow and, you know, I was going for great ball, whereas I'm usually going for perfect ball, but I knew I couldn't be late with my timing. I could be early with my timing because it could go to the right and still go in, so... Keep that in mind. Um, I just want to show you that little trick for that pitch because it is so close. I did not expect to run through that fairway. But uh, keep that in mind. Uh, I do think, uh, you know, you'll be able to uh, tackle that hole. And like I said, landing in that low void there is going to keep it very consistent. It's going to keep a lot of those side bounces from happening and having to anticipate them. So I do think that's the shot that you want to go for. 
and I'm going to set up all four guides to do that. So regardless of the wind, uh, if you want to check out some other winds, since uh, you know I might not have every guide available for you guys, but um, that's what uh, you know I'd anticipate that I'm going to do. And, and look what I'm doing with my spin, just a little bit of side spin here and just a tiny bit of back spin. You know, you can see me keeping it to the right kind of intentionally or, or to the left of the hole because I know that the wind is left to right bringing it back and it's probably going to, you know, bring it in a little bit towards the hole more so than I think. And this time, you know, I'm gonna focus on getting it to the hole. I don't care if I run it a little bit past. I just wanna see, you know, how the green reacts as this is only the second time I've played this hole. So I'm just trying to, you know, establish kind of what's going on with the hole a little bit. So the first time you saw me come up a little bit short, this time you're gonna see me make some slight corrections, go a little bit long to where I can start to hone in on things a little bit. And of course, you know, downwind, you're going to add a little bit more backspin since these, I think I just played it twice into the wind. So you're gonna see me, you know, adjusting accordingly based on um, and there you can see, I think I still missed to the right there, right? But I set up and my ball guide was to the left of the hole. So it just kind of shows you the wind effects. And that's something that you always want to keep in mind. But for that fourth hole, you know, I'm going to recommend kind of landing towards that low void and doing it with curl intentionally and maybe just one backspin just to kind of slow the ball down. Um, and more, more so about that than anything is just going to get you guys consistently getting the ball towards the hole, moving in the direction of the hole across the board. You could see, you know, all that fairway that I was moving around on was the ball tr trail wasn't jumping all over the place. Whereas if you go to the left or the right, you're going to see the more you hit it up on a slope somewhere, the harder it kicks to the right. So being in that low void there is going to be, you know, very favorable to get the ball rolling towards the hole on a consistent basis. So good luck with that hole. And like I said, uh, if you want a little bit more in depth, since that's only the first time I've ever tried that shot, um, if you want to see some more angles, feel free to check out uh, Pro and of course, you know, Masters. Uh, I understand it's not going to, you know, if you're doing expert, it might not uh, give you the, the best idea for the shot, but just being able to see how the ball reacts, a, a bunch of different scenarios could be beneficial. So good luck there, and I'll see you guys on the next video.